Hello to all students. I hope you are doing fine. If you are watching my lecture in English medium and I want to let you know that there are I always deliver my lecture or make video in two languages. One is English medium and the other is Urdu medium. So you can search on YouTube either you want to make you want to watch uh, English medium lecture or uh, Urdu medium or Hindi medium lecture. There are many lectures are available on my channel. You can search by any topic but if you need any assistant or you want to learn a specific topic uh, please let me know in my comments so i can make a lecture for you on that topic so let's move over towards our uh, today's topic today's topic is homeostasis so first of all i am going to emphasize on the meaning and the definition of homeostasis if you look at the word of homeostasis, homeo means similar, always same, while stasis is staying same. Keeping the equilibrium and conditions of our internal body same all the time is known as homeostasis. Not clear? We are going to look at the definition of the homeostasis. Protection of internal environment from the there is an internal environment in our body where certain chemical compounds, tissues, cells, liquids, blood, everything is working. We have to keep it at steady state, at constant state, at equilibrium state. And we have to protect it from the harms of fluctuations, increase and decrease of what? in external or internal environment because our internal and external environment somehow fluctuating rapidly for example the temperature of outside is increasing or decreasing rapidly sometimes body internal water concentration increases or decreases sometimes so we have to protect our body from the harms of these fluctuation so protecting the body's internal environment from the harms of fluctuations in either external or internal environment is known as homeostasis. How this system works? This is a very complicated system and it needs a lot of lectures to describe it completely but I am just going to overview this uh, our topic so that you can easily understand the uh, concept of uh, homeostasis. So there are certain components of homeostasis. These components are similar like nervous system. The first component of uh, homeostasis is stimuli as you know that there are two types of stimuli external stimuli which comes from outer environment and internal stimuli which comes from internal to the body for example if you have a pain in your stomach or in your tummy this is called internal stimulus why this stimulus because you feel pain in your belly and your tummy and it will force you to move go towards a doctor to see what's wrong in my tummy and there are some external stimuli like light, temperature, water uh, temp and some other kind of stimuli which comes from outside environment. So these, there are two categories of uh, external stimuli and internal stimuli. So these uh, stimuli produce kind of movement or response in our body. The second component of uh, homeostasis is receptors. So there are stimuli external and internal so there must be a system there must be an organ which can detect those stimuli so uh, god has gifted five senses skin nose tongue ears eyes which can detect these stimuli and uh, these stimuli are received by these sense organ which are known as receptors Receptors then transport this, these stimuli to control center. So there should be a control center which is usually brain, nervous system, endocrine system or any body, tissue or cell which can receive those stimuli and decides on a particular stimulus to resolve the issue. The fourth component is a factor. There should be some body muscles or body glands or body cells which should be receive the message from control center and act upon according to the message received. The last component of the homeostasis is a response. Everything which affected does is known as a receptor. 
is, a, is known as a response. So we are going to take an example uh, later in this video and later in this lecture so that you can easily understand this concept uh, of homeostasis. Our body is very sensitive. It has to be, it has to be accurate to live a healthy life. A man is trying, are trying very hard to disturb its every single thing in the body. But the nature has a system in the body which protects the body from the harms of the fluctuation which are taking place internal or external to our body. So let's look at the some uh, factors or ranges which are very important for our body for healthy life being. If these are disturbed, uh, a death can occur. The normal ranges uh, I have made a table for you and uh, this table contain four columns. One is component, the other is normal range. Then we will diagnose if the condition is normal range is too high or if the condition is too low, what will happen. So first of all, I'm going to look at the body temperature. As you know that there are some, there are two portions of our body. One are extremities, which are includes arms and legs. And one is trunk, which is called core body, core body. The core body temperature is uh, 37 degrees centigrade or 98.6 Fahrenheit. But this temperature is always not fixed. It is kept in narrow range. What is narrow range? Narrow range is little bit above or lower to the set point. For example, the narrow range for temperature is 36.2 to 37.2 degrees Celsius. And if you look in the Fahrenheit scale, it should be 97 to 99 Fahrenheit. So our body tends to maintain this body temperature within core body. Our temp temperature of our body in legs and arms could be variably more than that, but Remember, the most important vital organs are present in the trunk, in the core body. So that is why our body tries to keep our core temperature within a narrow range to protect the uh, body organs from the harms of fluctuation of the temperature. What happens if the temperature goes high or goes low? So if a temperature becomes too high, the condition is known as fever, pyrexia and hyperthermia what causes the body temperature to rise heat too much heat too much exposure to heat is can increase your body temperature running exercise too much running too much exercise can increase your body temperature infection can increase your body temperature it will harm your body our body tends to decrease the body temperature what happened if the body temperature decreases too much then the condition is known as hypothermia. The temperature has been gone low. What causes hypothermia? Very low metabolism cause hypothermia. Exposure to very cold condition causes, causes hypothermia. This is also damages the body. So the both condition hyper and hypothermia tends to damage the body, lead, which can lead to death. And our body tries to protect the body from the harms of these fluctuations. And this process is known as thermoregulation. This is a, this is thermoregulation is a process of homeostasis. The next component is blood pH. Blood pH is kept in a narrow range between 7.35 to 7.45. If uh, blood pH increases or decreases, that could lead to damage to our body. If the pH becomes too high, acidosis. Remember, if the pH is too high, it means that it is acidic. The pH will become low. And if the pH is too low, it means the value of pH has increased. It becomes basic alkaline. Condition is known as alkalosis. Both condition can affect many different types of body organs and can lead to death. So our body tends to maintain the pH by removing the alkaline or acetic salts from the body through urine. Blood heart rate, very important. Our heart rate should be 50 to 100 beats per minute. Different age categories have different rate of heartbeat, but it should be between 15 to 100. Some factors like fear, anxiety, depression, disease can alter the regular frequency, but if the 
persistent heartbeat rate increases it can lead to a disease known as tachycardia tachycardia too too much heartbeat more than 100 more than 150 heartbeats per minute can cause tachycardia less than 50 can cause bradycardia too low heartbeat both can lead to death breathing rate normal breathing rate is 16 to 20 times per minute during exercise it can increase up to 30 breaths 30 times per minute even 40 minutes per time but more than that not acceptable can condition uh, can leads to condition known as hyperventilation if the breathing rate decreases very low hypoventilation both condition can leads to death need have homeostasis glucose level very important very important component and the most common problem of the world today lot of youngsters old age normal children infants are becoming uh, uh, the problem with glucose level too much glucose or too much diabetic due to genetic problem 60 to 140 mg per dl required for normal glucose level if the glucose level increases in our body diabetes if uh, decreases hypoglycemia both conditions can cause severe damage to our kidneys our lungs our stomach our liver our brain and it cause even death and many of the deaths today are taking place due to the diabetes high blood glucose level have need to be monitored but who is monitoring homeostasis water water is very also very important component in our body where we are not taking the uh normal range of water but i am going to discuss the intake of water so usual amount of intake water is 2500 ml per day it could be increases or decreases with the weather in summer it could increase up to 5000 ml and in winter it can reduce but most of the time 2500 ml which is equal to uh, 2.5 liter and it equals to 10 glasses of water you have to drink it for proper functioning of the body if there is a too much water too much water is only when you have a kidney damage the after kidney damage water cannot be removed as a urine so increases of fluids in the body increases this can cause edema puffiness of the hands and feet and puffiness of the lower portion of the eyes which can ca- cause cardiac output and can lead to death too little water dehydration this is the main problem we are not drinking water we are thirsty but not taking water why not we taking water we don't know what happened dehydration dehydration cause so many problems in the body headaches most common problem taking panadols aspirin dispirin why drink water dehydration is gone headache is gone body function properly waste body waste materials is removed from the body so there are different mechanism there are different methods to do homeostasis so some of the uh, methods i have mentioned over here thermoregulation maintenance of body temperature osmoregulation maintenance of water and solutes excretion ma- removal of waste material from the body to maintain the ph blood glucose level very important to maintain at a normal range blood pressure maintaining at normal range toxins removal of toxins from the body by liver and kidneys ph maintaining the ph with the help of excretion and other uh, methods so there are a lot of methods which are uh, taking place in our body to maintain the homeostatic condition equilibrium of the body internal environment of the body which is in safe and you know, safe enough to live now how this system work so there are so many systems which are working in our body to keep the body in homeostatic condition I am, but i am going to discuss a mechanism which is known as feedback mechanism there are two types of feedback mechanism one is negative feedback mechanism and other is positive feedback mechanism usually negative type of feedback mechanism is usually used in maintaining the process of homeostasis so let's to take an example of negative feedback loop with the help of example of glucagon as you know that there are major organ in our body which is known as liver liver converts glucose into glycogen and glycogen into liver depending upon the condition 
there is another other organ right near to the liver which is known as pancreas and as you know that pancreas contain two types of cells alpha cells and beta cells alpha cell produce glucagon and beta cell produces insulin both of these hormone maintain glucose level in the body suppose you are dieting or you are fasting your blood glucose level decreases rapidly from the normal value if your blood glucose level is between 60 uh, sorry 60 to 140 this is normal but if it is going down less than 60 then you are going a condition known as hypoglycemia so homeostatic blood glucose level will decrease low this will cause this is a stimulus which is uh, which is received by alpha cells of the pancreas alpha cells of the pancreas when receive this stimulus they will produce a hormone known as glucagon alpha cells of pancreas will release glucagon glucagon is a hormone which releases into the blood from blood it reaches to the liver cells from liver cell uh, liver then converts stored glycogen into glucose to increase the level of glucose in the body so liver convert glycogen into glucose this glucose comes into the blood and blood glucose level increases so this process is known as negative feedback mechanism so what happen if your glucose level increases too much you eating too much sweets or some diabetic condition due to the damage to the beta cell body is not producing enough uh, insulin you are uh, having a diabetes type 1 or type 2 or anything or another condition which can leads to the high glucose level when there is a high glucose level in the blood the message is sent again to the pancreas this time beta cells receive this message and they produce insulin insulin will comes into the blood reach to the liver what will happen liver will convert glucose into glycogen and the glucose level in the body will in the blood will be reduced so in this way this negative feedback mechanism body maintains the process of hormone same process takes place in the body to maintain the body temperature to maintain the body temperature there is a receptor in our brain which is known as hypothalamus hypothalamus maintains the body temperature in a narrow range if body temperature become too much high it tries it tends to lower it if body temperature become too low it tends to increase it with the process of thermoregulation the other mechanism which is a positive feedback mechanism that is not usually involved in uh, uh, or homeostasis but they do have some function like breastfeeding if if some infant is uh, feeding on the breast of the mother whenever he start suckling on the nipples of the heart nipples of mother more hormones is produced and more hormones will leads to more production of the milk in the body this is known as positive feedback mechanism if we look at the uh, mechanisms there are also two types of mechanism which are taking place in our body to maintain the homeostasis number one is intrinsic mechanism which is automatic and the other is extrinsic mechanism which is done by nervous system and endocrine system if we look at the intrinsic mechanism it is automatic response in a cell or tissue it takes place by itself just like i gave you example of a high glucose level or low glucose level low glucose level is a stimulus which uh, stimulate the receptors of the pancreas which are alpha cells so the cells are uh, stimulated by the low glucose level so that is known as intrinsic while the other is extrinsic this system is done by uh, nervous system and endocrine system responses is controlled by nervous and endocrine high body temperature or low body temperature blood sent to hypothalamus hypothalamus then releases certain hormones which causes thermoregulation to increase or decrease the body temperature so that's all for now i hope you have uh, uh, some concept and some sense of uh, homeostasis hopefully see you in the next lecture until then bye